Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, this is Redberry Leo here, and welcome back to another Civil Air Patrol video. In yesterday's video, I mentioned that, hey, cap regulation 39-1 has been changed and updated, and, like, when I, I found out because I was, like, typing in 39-1, and I clicked the link, and it said it wasn't there anymore, and I was like, oh, okay. I guess something has changed here, so I went into the national website, looked for the new regulations, and the updated link was there. So, just as a reminder, all the other videos that I've made so far to date have been based off of the guidance in 39-1, based off of the changes from 3 March 2020. And so this video is to kind of update that information, specifically regarding the grooming side of the regulation. So hopefully you find this video to be useful. I did make a grooming video previously, but they have updated several of the standards. And if you yourself would like to look at the new regulation, it is linked in the description and anything that has changed will be highlighted in gray. So if you look at the previous version and you look at the current version, you'll see that updated language in those gray highlights. So let's go ahead and start talking about some of those changes from top to bottom in the regulation, or at least in the interim letter, interim change letter, I should say, um, for our document here. So it has added that if you have pseudofolliculitis barbae or other similar skin conditions and you are male, then you can get a medical waiver for shaving. And that was not previously in there. You could submit religious or gender waivers, but now they have added that additional medical waiver. And so they have to set, send in a letter of accommodation with like medical documentation indicating that skin condition. And then um, it must be renewed every five years if the condition does continue and persist over time. So the final approval authority for any uniform requests is at the national level. So any subordinate commanders, they cannot do that approval. They have to send it up the chain in order to get approval. And that's for religious, gender, or medical waivers that are being submitted. So the next point of discussion with grooming is dyeing your hair. Now, this is a big change. In the past, it used to be that only female members were allowed to dye their hair and it could be dyed a natural color. Now, all members are authorized to dye their beautiful locks, but they must be of natural color. Um, so that includes, the, the examples of here are burgundy, purple, orange, fluorescent, or neon colors. So it has to be a natural car color regardless of their natural born hair color. So um, that's something that is really different in the past. So if you are any member, now you can. The next standard involving grooming is the male hair standards. And so it has actually increased in bulk regardless of length. And so it's two inches in bulk. And so just as a reminder, bulk is like how far it is off your head. So it can be a maximum of two inches off of your head but also keep in mind that it can't pass underneath the front brim and it should be tapered along the sides. So another change is also that you can have a part in your hair and it can't, it can't be longer than four inches long and it can't be wider than a fourth of an inch, but males may now have a part in their hair. So that's pretty cool. And so you, you can have just one part in your hair uh, from the front to the back not slanted or curved um, and it could be on either side of your head so now males can have a part and like if you want to do just a little bit like not over the top like you can't do mohawks or mullets or etched designs like you can't do any of that still but it's it's expanding like potential hairstyles for you to choose from and just going back into the medical waivers with shaving if you are authorized to have a beard in a U.S. Air Force style uniform, it has to be approved on the national level, first of all, and it may not exceed a quarter of an inch in length, and it must be trimmed. So it's got to be kept fairly short, um, which it's a little bit challenging to do. I'm sure I actually, I, I have no idea. I've never had to deal with shaving, but uh, just so you know, if you do have that medical waiver, you do need to keep the hair trimmed 
to less than a quarter, like a quarter of an inch or less. So it's, it's pretty close to your face. And just so you know, it can't have that like lined or like trimmed, like shaped design. It's supposed to be just like that, that natural, oh natural growth on your face. One of the biggest changes in the interim letter is that female hair standards have significantly shifted. So in, in the past few months, the Air Force actually recently announced that they were updating female ha hair standards to be a little bit more inclusive and more diverse. And so a lot of people were asking me, like, when is CAP going to change the hair standards to align with the Air Force? I was like, I don't know. But they've come up with that change. And so the standards do very closely align. I'm not sure if it's 100% the same, but I'm pretty sure it's very, very close, if not the same language, because we are wearing that Air Force style uniform. And so we are supposed to adhere to what the Air Force requires. So instead of having to wear that up high, high and tight bun, now females are authorized to wear a ponytail, a single ponytail, a single braid or double braids that do not exceed a six inch radius from where the hair is gathered. Okay, so like my my ponytail is not gonna have that problem. That's one of the biggest things and when you are wearing your hair it's not supposed to go be below where your your arm <laughs> armpit height is. Um, ba basically like where your your shoulder blades are. It's not supposed to go below that. So if you do have really, really long hair, you probably will need to wear a bun because it would go below that required height of being here or above. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. I mean, I don't keep my hair that long. Like my hair is long, but it's not that long. And there's also updates on bangs. You can have bangs, but they may not cover the eyes. They may cover your eyebrows, but they may not cover your eyes. So that gives females more options for hairstyles. There's another change that's pretty major that says, I'm gonna quote this here, multiple locks, braids, twists, or cornrows may come together down the back into one or two braids or as a single ponytail as described in paragraph 3.2.1.3. Before, you were not allowed to do cornrows. Males are still not authorized to do so, but females, it has expanded into that realm. So if you do need to have cornrows to keep your hair nice and tight and keep things together, or that that's your preferred hairstyle, females are authorized to do that now, as long as it comes together in one braid, two braids, or a ponytail. I'm just going to throw in two other quick things, one regarding nail polish and one regarding lipstick color. They added in specific language saying that nail polish has to be a single color that does not distract from the uniform, nor can the polish be extreme in color. So sometimes people have like one nail white and then the rest are like a cream color and that used to meet the requirements, but now it has to be that everything is just one color. And then also they made an update about lipstick that it, it says that you cannot detract from the uniform. So it should not be a super duper bright, it says bright fire engine red or fluorescent colors. It says the colors they have listed here are purple, gold, blue, black, bright fire engine red and fluorescent colors. I think the specific ones that they really don't like is like the super bright red colors. There is a small update on cosmetic tattooing. This may not apply to you, but just so you know, if you do have cosmetic tattooing, like permanent cosmetic tattooing, as long as it's conservative and moderate within reasonable limits, like that's fine, but it's not supposed to distinctly contrast from complexion of whoever is wearing the cosmetic tattooing. So those are just the overall updates here. The big things, just, as a quick summary, two inches in bulk for males and you can part your hair, four inches in length and a quarter of an inch in width at a maximum. And females, you are allowed to have a ponytail, a single braid, a double braid, using twists and braids, cornrows, however you'd like, as long as it does fall into one of those three things, but does not fall below where the line of your 
the bottom of your armpit to like through your shoulder blades is on your back. It's not supposed to be super wide. It's supposed to be nice and right there. Um, and if you do need to apply for a medical waiver, you are now authorized to do so. And you must keep that beard trimmed to a quarter of an inch without doing fancy designs on the sides. It just should be trimmed. All right, so that is your summary for grooming standard changes in the interim change letter for cap regulation 39-1. I will be making a few additional videos to this one, but there's your first update in full. So if you have any questions, please feel free to include it in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and that is all folks until next time. Toodles.